A B K. Those three letters are infamous among the juggalo world. Born Jamie Laurie, Anybody Killer was raised on Detroit's east side. Killer began his rapping career at age 15, helping carve out Detroit's wicked shit sound in the early days. Music was in my family, so I was always, you know, had the ability to do it. So. Killer performed with rap acts such as Depressed and the Crazy Clan. First group was Crazy Clan, me and Lamel, it was J Mo and J Ho. We released two albums, it was Frustrations and Developmental. It was more like a, um, a party feel, you know, we were always there with the case of 40s and stuff like that. In the year 2000, the extremely talented ABK was recruited as a hype man for psychopathic records recording artist Blaze Your Dead Homie. My boy Blaze, he needed a hype man. He was signed to Psychopathic. He, you know, by that time he had put out his first album. He was about to start, you know, going on the road and promoting it. He needed a hype man, hopped on with him and came from there. Hitting the road, tour after tour with Blaze, Killer began to assemble a massive fan base of his own. And by 2002, Killer was signed himself as a Psychopathic Records recording artist. Being a solo artist on Psychopathic was amazing. You know, it was, either way, just, just being with the Hatcher, it was, it was always cool, it was always a good time. So it's, it's like, no matter what position you, you were really at, it was like you were gonna have fun regardless. So being, being, being able to do my own stuff, it was just, it was even cooler, you know? It's just like, you know, having an extra piece of cake. <laughs> His first solo performance took place at the 2002 Gathering of the Juggalos. And from that day on, it was on. When I first started performing in front of the Juggalos, it was more like, you know, Juggalos is a hard group. You gotta prove yourself to them. They ain't gonna put up with no shit. They ain't gonna sit there and listen to no bullshit. They're gonna, you know, you gotta put your heart and soul out on that stage or you're gonna get something tossed at you, more or less. So once they got to know me, I got to know a lot of them. It's like, you know, they started chanting the ABK chants. And, and then that was, you know, it's like, Fine, I'm accepted, it's cool, it's, you know, we're all good. The Juggalos waited in much anticipation for ABK's debut solo album, The Hatchet Warrior. When Hatchet Warrior, Alex Abyss came into the dress room of Hollow Wicked and was like, how, how quick can you have an album done? So I more or less, you know, put my foot in my mouth and was like, you know, as soon as you need it. <laughs> so right after, it was just a record. Right after I said that, I was in the studio day and night. Joe Bruce was in here with me. We were in here till five, six in the morning sometimes. The album was finally released on April 8th in 2003 and immediately went on to become a huge underground success for The Hatchet. ABK then embarked on several tours with other Hatchet acts. Anybody Killa had arrived. Before long, Killa had begun work on his second full-length album the much-anticipated Dirty History. This album touched heavily on ABK's Native American roots and fully carved out the persona that is anybody killer. Dirty History was my comfortable album. I was, I was relaxed, I was cool, with, you know, I was real comfortable in the Lotus Pod, had my swagger on the bike, so it was, it was more or less just, let's do some fun music and have fun with it, and, and that's, that's what we got out of it. I always, I always look at Dirty History, like at, you know, how Hatch Warrior was kind of based on, you know, the movie The Warriors, I always look at Dirty History kind of based on the movie, the you know, Carrie, you know, because it's like, they could go two ways, they could love it or they could all laugh at you. You know what I'm saying? And what I more or less said is they're all gonna laugh at me anyways. Dirty History was released on July 27, 2004 to enormous fanfare. In the year 2006, after Killa had finished two years of promotion for Dirty History, he returned home with a new agenda. ABK decided it was time to step down from the main stage and help start the careers of some of his longtime homies. My departure from Psychopathic, more or less just giving myself the ability to, you know, go back and help out some old school cats that, you know, I felt deserved a chance. Just like, you know, people at Psychopathic felt I deserved a chance, you know, coming as Blazes hype man and, you know, having, having even, you know, the courage and putting the album out for me, you know, not really even knowing how it would sell this and that, but, you know, just doing it, you know, that's, if, if no one gave me a chance, you wouldn't have Hatchet Warrior, just like if I didn't give 
anyone a chance, then they wouldn't have artists like Flagrant or Strict Nine or, you know, just extra underground, underground artists, you know, the same candy that I would see as a kid going in there and seeing those underground artists and like, let me get that, no one else can get that. It's not everywhere, it's, you know what I'm saying? And that's what I wanted to do is just give back to what was given to me. Anybody Killer started and financed his own label, Native World Incorporated. In the year 2007, ABK made his official return to a psychopathic record stage at the eighth annual Gathering of the Juggalos to an overwhelming response. And now, it's 2008. Psychopathic Records and Native World Incorporated and Anybody Killer officially announce the return of ABK to Psychopathic Records. Just in time for the release of the most anticipated album of his career, Mudface. The Hatchet Warrior has come home.